All right, we're going to keep going with our eyes. I want you to visualize is this rod, okay? But all I'm going to do is bend him until he turns into a cycle. All right, so again, we're going to treat rod exactly the same as we did before. We're going to go from zero to L, cut them up into individual little pieces like we uh, did before. But instead of calling that length just that in L, we're going to go from zero all the way around a soikel, which you all know is a circumference. It's a two pi r. So that will be the only difference. There's the bounds. So what I'm going to do is instead of recreating a rod one centimeter at a time, I'm going to recreate a circle one centimeter at a time. That's what this little piece of tape um, symbol either shows you as a differential length or a differential piece of the circumference. Okay, that's all it is. Other than that, it's exactly the same. So there's rod, we bend them into a circle. Radius r. We're still going to go around rod's length, but we're going to call that a circumference. It's 2 pi r. So again, that little piece of the circumference right there, that could be a differential mass. It's also what I will now call a differential circumference, but it's the same thing as a differential L, all right? I'm probably too lazy to write the word circumference. That's, uh, that's a big one. Um, so our bounds are from 0 to 2 pi r, and the circle is still one dimensional, all right? We're going to neglect the thickness or the height of it. So it's still just a one dimensional item. So the density we'll be using is a lambda, which you guys all know is a mass per length, which is the same thing as a differential mass per differential length. And again, that differential length is the differential part of the circumference. So the i is from 0 to 2 pi r, the r squared dm, all right, remember that's always the formula, the integral of r squared dm. The r in that formula is, again, the distance that the mass is from the axis of rotation, which is just the radius of the circle, so the little r becomes a capital R. That differential mass is what I just uh, reminded you up here. It is lambda times the differential length, or the differential part of the circumference, okay? so. The little r becomes a big r, right? The r, okay? And we go from 0 to 2 pi r lambda dl. So once you have this set up, you guys know uh, you fish out constants. You don't do calculus with constants. You do algebra with constants. So you fish it out. And in this case, you see that r is a constant. It's the radius of the circle. It's whatever the r happens to be. And the density is obviously going to stay constant. So you fish that out. And all you're left with is integrating a differential L. And gosh, that's easy. So... Uh, just rewriting those constants out there times the L, the integral of the differential from 0 to 2 pi r. That's not too bad at all, eh? Once we uh, get that, throw the bounds in, it becomes r squared lambda times 2 pi r. Okay, now remember that lambda is something we can now uh, swapstitute out again. So that lambda, remember, is a mass per length okay so the length then is the circumference of the circle it's another two pi r so we got a lot of cycles going on over the r don't we so where that lambda is boxed in red i just rewrote it in red down there so it becomes the r squared times the mass divided by 2 pi r, that's the lambda, times r, 2 pi r. That was our bounds from integrating. Okay, when you kill what needs killing over here, all of that simplifies down to just a plain old mr squared. So the i of a ring, a hula hoop rolling downhill, or a, a, a hollow guy just going in circles here, rolling like that, just plain old mr squared. This guy's I is the same thing. It's just a plain old MR squared. And hopefully you remember that's the same I as Bob here. Because if I get Bob going fast enough, then you wouldn't even be able to tell 
that he's not a complete circle. He just traces out a circle. So all of his mass is the same distance away from the axis of rotation, just like that roll of tape is. So Bob is a ring. A ring is Bob. I. The next thing I will show you is a very similar one, but what if now that cylinder, what if that ring gains some height? So we're going to now have a ring that has some height. We'll call that a hollow cylinder, and that's what this guy is. I bet you can see that, can't you? Now, what I'm going to do is the exact same thing. I did with this cylinder here. Remember, I put that little piece of tape on there, and I said I'm going to go all the way around the perimeter of that circle by adding those little pieces of tape. The only difference between that one and this one is that circumference now has some height. So I will do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take a piece of tape, all I'm going to do is put a piece of tape along the can right about yay. And what you can then see is now I have a differential piece of that can. And if I keep putting strips of tape all the way around that can, what I can do is recreate the can with a whole bunch of rectangles going around the perimeter of the can, all right, or the circumference of the can. So if I just put a whole bunch of rectangles together, I can make a circle. So that's another joke I use. A circle's nothing but a bunch of rectangles. That piece of tape is the shape of a rectangle. And all I'm going to do is keep putting a whole bunch of little rectangles next to each other until I get all the way around the circumference of the can. So all we're going to do is just add a letter H to what we just did with the hula hoop. All right. Um, so what we have there is a hollow cylinder rolling. That cylinder, again, has an H to it. It also has an R. The dotted line represents the axis it's rotating around. That red strip represents this piece of tape. All right, that's what I'm trying to recreate with that red strip. So that red strip is the differential mass, which is now a differential area. Okay, this guy has two dimensions, not just one. So it is a differential area, okay, which then is the width of this strip of tape times the height of it. All right, that's what the differential area is. Cool. And two-dimensional. So sigma is mass per area, which means it's the same thing as a differential mass per differential area. All right. That differential area is what I just said. It's the width times the height of that red strip or the width times the height of this piece of tape. The width, the thickness of that piece of tape just represents the differential piece of the circumference or just the differential length, all right? That's all it is, the differential piece of the circumference or differential length. The height is just the height of the cylinder, whatever dimension is given, or if it isn't given, just call it H. All right, so the bounds then are gonna be the same thing as this ring. It's the exact same uh, bounds. You start at zero, go all the way around the perimeter, which is two pi r. So just start right there and go all the way around, two pi r. So there's the bounds from zero to two pi r. It's r squared dm. Okay, remember that's always the formula we start with, our integral of r squared dm. That little r in that formula is the radius of the cylinder, so it becomes a big r. That differential mass is what I just told you is a sigma times a differential area. And that differential area is what I just reminded you. It is a differential uh, length times the height or the differential piece of the circumference of DL times an H. So what we'll do is put her all together here. So we go from zero to two pi R. That little R became the capital R squared sigma H DL. All right. Now, when we fish out these constants here, you guys know, again, we're going to fish out the constants. The R is the radius of the cylinder, and that ain't changing. Sigma, again, is the density. That is a constant. That's not changing. And so does the height of the cylinder. This height 
is whatever it is, so the height isn't changing. And so look at how this becomes identical to what we just did uh, up there with a differential L. See how that's a sigma h r squared. I fished all of that out, and all I'm left with is integrating a differential length. It's the exact same thing from 0 to 2 pi r. That ought to look strikingly identical to what we did up here when it was just a hollow ring. It's an integral from 2 pi 0 to 2 pi r, a differential length. It's the same thing. The only difference is, again, instead of it being a lambda, it's a sigma, and we just added an h because the ring now has some h. It's all it is. So, that's easy. It's a sigma h r squared times that length now from 0 to 2 pi r. So now just put the bounds in. The bounds is just 2 pi r minus 0. And remember, that sigma is mass divided by area. Now that's the area of the whole thing, which is the circumference of that circle is 2 pi r times the height of that cylinder, okay? So that whole thing is the denominator. What's written in red there is what I'm going to substitute into that equation. So where sigma is is what's written in red, m over 2 pi r h. That h is that h, that r squared is that r squared, and these 2 pi r's are those 2 pi r's. And when you get through killing what needs killing, you're left with the exact same thing as a ring. It's just an MR squared. So a cylinder that is hollow is the exact same thing as a ring. It doesn't matter. So this behaves exactly the same as this, um, and it behaves exactly the same as this. And so every everything, it's, it's, it's boy, a lot of stuff's the same here. So that's why I always say smart is the ability to look at one thing and see something else. So when you see that piece of tape right there do you see it's exactly the same as that piece of tape right there it, it because it's well because it is the same the only difference is it's got some height and when you see a ring can you visualize a rod that's all it is let's just bend rod into a circle and it becomes a ring so they're all the same that's why i'm telling you you can't just you know memorize one way through this you just got to visualize stuff so rings are nothing more than rods and cylinders are nothing more than tall rings. That's it. Huh? So we got a few more eyes to go here. We're going to, uh, the next one do is, is take those rings and make them solid disks like a record. Uh, and then we're going to take these hollow cylinders and turn them into solid cylinders like a stack of records. Um, and then I'll do one more example where sometimes it's hard to tell if the disk is hollow or solid. Um, like with the roll of toilet paper, which, ooh, you're not getting. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right. So, yay, physics.